righty. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, again, this is Cynthia LaRue, and thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar. We're going to go ahead and get started now. Um, today is Get Out of the Business, Do What You Do Best. Um, this webinar is scheduled for about an hour. Um, we are using that called WebEx, as I'm sure you all can see. And we highly encourage you to please raise your hand, to chat me, I'm the host, um, to send any questions that you have. We absolutely will unmute anyone that would like to um, speak to the panelists today and ask your questions verbally, or you can chat those to me. So there are several options in the WebEx panel for you to send over uh, questions to me as the host. I'd like to start out today by introducing our panelists. Um, today we have James Malcor, he's our Chief Technology Officer here at also, Matt Briggs, our Director of New Business Development. On today, our agenda, we're going to be going over really some exciting content for all of you. We're going to go over really uh, and focus on how you can get out of the IT business, focus on service desk, help desk knock, what's the difference? And we're gonna go over some case studies and some different tips and tricks from the team today. So um, in this deck, we'll be emailed to every single person who attends the webinar today along with a, a link to the recording. So you will be receiving a communication from uh, the marketing team here at Diapath when we get wrapped up. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Matt. Thanks, Cynthia. <clears throat> Appreciate it. Um, man, is that how little hair I have? I think that was a bad Photoshop job in my picture. James, tell me it's not true. Uh, so, hey, here, here's a, uh, Let's let's dive in and talk a little bit about uh, Diopath briefly for for those of you that don't know us. Um, so we've been in the IT outsourcing business for uh, 24 years. We're going on to 25 years now. So, um, candidly, we have some uh, some longevity. We've enjoyed longevity in the space and have successfully navigated um, several major market transitions. Um, however, one of the, the things that's remained constant throughout all the years of us talking to organizations about IT outsourcing is um, that that is a, a, an, an option that will allow you to increase revenue um, if you at least outsource some of uh, the IT support function. Um, and so, you know, a little bit about you know, our, our, our revenue mix and who we work with. So the majority of our business is derived from uh, either the commercial, education, or federal uh, government sectors. And in regard to the uh, commercial practice, 50% of our annual revenue is derived from uh, mid-market organizations. So we define that as a few hundred uh, to a few thousand uh, employees. Um, and then 25% of our business comes from the enterprise and the rest uh, is, is from um, SMB. Uh, many of our clients are multinational in nature, um, and therefore, uh, you know, our Houston and El Paso-based service desk and NOC provide support to end users uh, and location network systems uh, around the globe. Um, we have carved out uh, a few uh, verticals um, in commercial, so we've got some pedigree and energy, so uh, especially being co-headquartered in Houston, um, uh, oil, uh, gas, utilities. Um, we've done some interesting things in uh, you know transportation, logistics, um, and and we're we're proud uh, to call federal agencies such as the DoD, uh, Department of Justice, HHS, and Veterans Affairs as uh, as clients, and so that's why you see the top secret security clearance. Uh, with the U.S. government bullet there. <clears throat> Why is that important if you're a private sector client? Um, the audits, the assessments, the certifications, the staff, uh, process policies that we've had to put in place um, are airtight. And so uh, private sector clients have leveraged off of um, what, we've, uh, what we've done there. Um, so, uh, Cynthia, if you can advance, please, to the, the next slide. Um, so let, let's chat a little bit about the objectives. So in talking with organizations over the years about uh, IT challenges, one of the recurring themes uh, is that internal resources get run over by tactical tasks uh, required to take care of network systems, servers, uh, end user support, um, and, and even vendors and OEMs. 
And, and so, you know, based on that fact, there's several issues that arise. Um, there's, there's little to no time uh, invested on strategy and ensuring technology is, is truly a business enabler. Um, you know, and, and then con consistently being in this firefighting mode um, means uh, efforts to continually improve uh, the environment fall by the wayside, right? They get put on the back burner. And then even tactical requirements suffer due to workload and due to maybe even mismatch of, of skill sets. So ultimately these challenges, uh, you know, increase risk, increase cost, uh, impact operational efficiency, and at the end of the day, it's going to impact, uh, uh, you know, it'll lead to lower revenue and, uh, and profitability at the same time. So, um, you know, in today's webinar, we'd like to, you know, discuss the top four reasons to outsource your IT service desk and uh, network operation center or remote monitoring and management. And we're going to get to that a, a little bit later. Cynthia? Um, so before we address the topic of why IT outsourcing should be seriously considered, if you're not doing it or uh, aren't considering it at the moment, um, really think we have to address several key components of IT outsourcing. Um, so uh, help desk versus service desk. Um, so a lot of times uh, these terms are used synonymously and uh, in our opinion, uh, probably shouldn't be. So yes, the focus is on supporting the end user. Um, and uh, you know, I, I think really that's where the similarities stop, again, from our perspective. So if you look at help desk, uh, for me, it's rudimentary end user uh, support services. You know, measurements come in, in response versus resolution. Um, generally, uh, there's a one resource that's lower level that uh, takes on a ticket and generally has to hand off to a higher level resource, which extends um, resolution timeframes. Typically, there's a little bit more of a narrow focus on what is being supported, uh, you know, with the, the end user. It's not typically metric or, or ITIL uh, aligned, and I, I would think of it more as, as transactional, right, or tactical. And then, you know, if you look at service desk, uh, which is what we offer, uh, you know, it's 24 by seven end user support, but it's much more than that. And I know James is gonna get into that in a few slides uh, in, a, in a bit. So change management, asset management, service catalogs, um, you know, not knowledge base, not only maintaining it, but uh, um, uh, updating it uh, every, every so often. Guaranteed service level agreements. And I'll give you an example, right? If we uh, have a priority one ticket, um, there is an SLA around uh, resolution timeframes, four hours in, in, in that case. Um, you know, we are, we are ITIL aligned, which stands for Information Technology uh, Infrastructure Library. And I know James, again, is gonna chat about it, but making sure that technology is aligned uh, with the business and, and, and relevant to the business. Uh, constantly monitoring uh, customer service. So we'll do CSAT surveys after every ticket. Um, and, and we chat a little bit about resolution versus response. And, and then, you know, the last thing I'll hit on uh, is, is single point of contact, right? So we want to make sure that the resource that ingests that ticket um, can uh, affect change and, and, and work the ticket and close it out, uh, therefore making us more efficient and, and your end user base more efficient so they're getting time back. Um, and then on, on the NOC side, so that stands for Network Operations Center, for those of you who don't know. Um, and, and so in, in addition to supporting the end user um, so that they can continue to operate efficiently, <clears throat> as you know, there's underlying technology that runs the business and needs to be looked after. So um, network devices, uh, system servers, security, uh, OEMs, uh, vendor management. And so, uh, we, we tie that into our remote monitoring management service uh, that is backstopped by our engineering resources in Houston and our NOC, which is co-located with the service desk. Cynthia, if we can move on, please. Okay, and, and James, before I kick it over to you to, if you don't mind, just a, a quick word on, on ITIL. Um, so again, by, by definition, ITEL is a set of 
uh, detailed pr uh, practices for IT services management that focuses on aligning IT services with, with business needs, right? It's, a, um, it's as simple as that from a definition perspective. Now, executing on, on ITIL is a, a whole different matter. And so, so, James, maybe if you can dig into this, we would, uh, we would appreciate it. Yeah, not, not a problem, Matt. So, um, you know, the difference really, when we start talking about help desk and service desk and, and you know, what the differences are and uh, ITIL aligned uh, service desk is, is different than some. So when, when we talk about an ITIL aligned um, service desk, really what, what we're talking about is that technology management piece behind the scenes of the service desk. So it's not just answering the phone uh, and solving an, a, a user's uh, issue. Um, it's really fielding issues that are business impacting from, you know, executive sales, marketing, finance, operations, uh, really any any department or any individual within um, a company, right? And and that service desk is 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 really there to be the front lines, um, to really help one alleviate any of the incidents that come in, any problems that come in. Um, working with departments for you know changes, it could be related to infrastructure operations, health and safety, you name it, uh, release management from a development perspective, um, also asset management of devices within the, the organization and tying those back to changes that could occur within the environment. And then also keeping a knowledge base, you know, as Matt alluded to earlier, you know, updating a knowledge, knowledge base as incidents, problems come in, um, you know, keeping track of those things for analysts to be able to to review, to resolve issues quickly. Um, and then also a service catalog. So a, as issues and items come in, incidents, problems, uh, changes, those type of things, that service catalog is, is, a, is a living uh, database of uh, services within the organization. So being able to categorize those type of services to understand, you know, where are our problems coming from? What, where are we generating the most incidents? Uh, you know, what, what is the driver for the tickets that we have and what are the trends associated to it, right? So it gives us a mechanism to catalog that data and then be able to really dive in and be proactive, right? That is a major differentiator between one, a service desk and a help desk where, you know, an escalation point to a team that's actually proactively looking at the environment, resolving that environment um, and doing analytics on that environment. And, and some of those things that come out of it from like a technology management perspective are like the end user systems and devices, uh, applications that the users might be utilizing or even business applications, uh, vendor support. So, you know, we see this a lot from operations or uh, HR or, or other departments like that where we're having to um, escalate or have things escalated to us and we're working with outside vendors for organizations. Um, and then keeping track of those tickets and making sure that the communication is, it does not drop off and driving it to resolution, right? It could be uh, internet providers to HR applications. Uh, and then also the network systems. So, you know, con connectivity to the corporate office, remote offices, um, and those times, those things as well. And then escalating those over to, to the NOC. And Cynthia, can you move to the next slide, please? So when we start looking at Excuse the integration, me, yes. I have one question. Um, okay. Where is DialPass Service Desk located? Uh, it's located in Houston. Thank you. All right. Um, so when you start looking at Service Desk and NOC as a combined component, right? So a part of that overall ITIL framework, um, really they are one, one in the same. Uh, and what I mean by that is they have to be tightly integrated because we all follow the same ITIL processes um, that are defined. So how an incident, you know, traverses service desk all the way to knock resources, maybe being systems or network, right? Uh, problem management and all of these items are, are tightly integrated, right? They are not just service desk related um, kind of processes and workflows. So these are also across the NOC. So when you start looking at the technology management component, you know, what gets spawned out of, you know, incidents, problems, changes, uh, system network administration and management engineering, right? 
So um, those things that get spawned out of that are support for like your end users and, and things like that, where it could be your laptops, desktops, multi-use devices, smart devices, uh, applications, you know, productivity applications like Office 365, local installs, Adobe, right? Um, and I talked a little bit about the, the end user uh, vendor support. But the big thing also is the business applications. So when you start talking about support of understanding, you know, what are critical to the business so uh, in the service catalog and how that all comes together is those business apps are critical so understanding what crm is in place how do we manage how do we support um, those type of things how how are we supporting the erp hr functionality and, and even the integrations between um uh, between the applications so uh, and then ops operational or health and safety type business applications so a lot of these applications are utilized to drive revenue for the business so uh, IT being service desk and knock has to clearly understand how they're used um, how they work together and then also how they drive revenue for the business so they understand the impact right um, and then from a server perspective is uh, really how we're managing, you know, the Windows servers, Linux, and things like that. Network being routers, firewall switches, and those type of things. So all these are, uh, I would say, all these are items that would fall into a service catalog so that we could clearly uh, map them back to say where are our, our issues coming from, right? Um, and then also from that perspective, everybody from a service desk and not, not perspective sees that service catalog, can see that trending data. It's critical for for an uh, overall for an IT team to have that visibility. That's a major differentiator bet between like a help desk or just a standard service desk or knock, right? And James, uh, we have a question. Actually, Matt, this question is for you. Um, uh, the the person asked. You mentioned increased revenues from outsourcing. What type of productivity or revenue gains or cost sav savings are you typically seeing? Yeah. So. <laughs> It, it's um, it's variable. It, it depends on uh, you know the industry uh, the organization is uh, the, the size of the organization. Um, but but we're, we're going to get to a stat in a little bit about uh, inefficiencies impact twenty to thirty percent of a organization's revenue annually. And, and obviously, IT is a contributing factor to um, inefficient operations. So it, it is somewhere, you know, b between 30% and, and, and less of that number. So there isn't a, a hard and fast number of data points that, that we have. But um, the reality is we're, we're focused on when we come in and uh, find an environment that is more reactive and, and chaotic, and we, we stabilize, and then we can focus on um, continuous improvement and uh, maturing the IT model in general. Um, you know, there, there are absolutely ways for us to, to move the, the needle um, with uh, efficiency gains, and that's going to impact um, the, the, the top line and the bottom line. So um, tough to put a specific number on it. I mean, James, anything else to, to yep. add to that? Yeah, I'd like I'd like to add just so when when you look at an outsourced service desk or knock or those type of things and and, and you know in this day and age with like cybersecurity um, you know being such a major thing but also look at like compliance uh, and regulatory compliance type things um, when you subscribe to these type of services what you're what you're doing is also reducing the investment that needs to be made in like a full-blown ITSM or the individuals to to run these systems or the onboarding costs for those right that that people might uh, you know have to take on or, or spread the cost over three years so you, you're looking at a whole bunch of systems in your environment uh, to take you to a place to be compliant like especially if you have regulatory compliance or or you're doing business with a publicly traded company there, there's requirements that you have to follow as well so those things are um, I won't say just it's like a flick of a switch, but it almost is. So you're getting a full-blown ITSM system with a service desk, with policies, with procedures, with, you know, these uh, monitoring and RMM tools and, and application, you know, support tools, um, almost instantaneous that really when we start looking at it, you know, what we've seen, uh, we've seen savings in, you know, year over year of 100,000 or, or 200,000, just depending on the size of the organizations. 
Um, so really, I, I think that's also another way to look at it. And, and it's very easy for those type of organizations to be, or serve, sorry, like managed services providers or when you outsource these type of things um, to shift these applications to, you know, the, the best type of applications out there for providing support versus you having to make investments in them, ripping, ripping them out, and then investing in and redeploying. So I think that's another another way of looking at it as well. Yeah. Well said, James. Should we move on? Yep. Next slide, please. Yeah, so it, it's uh, it's probably a good segue because, you know, the, the question ties into our client engagement model. And so um, this graphic, I think, sums it up nicely. So, so what we've, you know, found over the years is internal IT resources are focused on different tasks than what they were hired for, you know, may, maybe more, more tactical stuff um, because uh, they don't have a choice really in, in, in the current support model. So um, anywhere from 80% of, of internal IT resources time is spent uh, below this waterline on, on, on the graphic and, and really on tactical functions. So you think of triage, you know, vendor management, um, end user support, um, you know, care and feeding of security posture, you know, infrastructure. Um, meanwhile, uh, the organization uh, hired that resource uh, to be more strategic and is looking for internal IT uh, to be more strategic and align technology to meet the demands of the business. And so, you know, Diopath in part exists to support our clients' um, tactical needs so that we can elevate internal resources to add more value, right? And, and, and then, you know, we, we talked about um, stabilizing and then um, delivering continuous improvement through a methodology and process. Um, we generally see that waterline start to, to move uh, north, right? And, and, and so honestly, that has an impact, right, on revenue. If we've got um, IT uh, folks that are internal that are uh, being more strategic uh, things are just going to operate that much more uh, efficiently when, when it's aligned with the business. Um, James, any anything else to add here? No, Matt, that, that pretty sums it, pretty much sums it up. And uh, we do have another question. Um, do Diapath clients have access to a knowledge data pay, database or any other type of reporting? So, yeah, yeah, I'll take... Yeah, I'll take that one. So, from a from a reporting perspective, they do. They they actually have um, not just they don't just receive a report and say here's what you have and what's going on. Um, they 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 have an individual that they can talk to uh, that reviews the tickets, the reporting, the metrics associated with the service desk as well, um, and you know or the, or the NOC. So, any open tickets, any project tickets, but also they they also receive the standard reporting as well. Um, what, what was the other part of that question? Sorry, Cynthia. Excuse me. Um, and then um, just the access to a knowledge database and any other type of reporting. Yeah, so so the client does have access to, um, uh, can have access to the ticketing system as well where the knowledge base articles are stored. Um, and then we also have a, a stored documentation library that we, we can share out with the clients as well. All right, let's uh, move on. All right, so here, here's a here's a slide on on inefficiency and and um, IDC through their market research, uh, and and this this is general, uh, so this isn't just IT related as I mentioned earlier. So twenty percent to thirty percent of revenue is, is gone, poof, right? And in, in, in every year. Um, and um, I, I'm confident that our IT outsourcing solutions can help claw back um, some of that lost revenue, and, and we've already hit on uh, some of the, the main reasons, but just to, um, I guess, trivialize it a little bit, right? I mean, if we can get greater network uptime, if we can get better application performance, if we can get user issues uh, resolved more quickly, um, if we can provide some self-service to those end users, 
um, so that they're not taxing IT resources. That allows us, uh, th those are some ways in which we would claw back um, some, some of the revenue. So Cynthia, I think we can move on from this one. All right, so, so five costs of operational inefficiency, uh, strategy, risk, quality of work, time, money. What I wanna do with this slide is, is tie it back to some um, examples that, that we see in the field. So from a strategy perspective, um, you know, if, if internal resources are stuck on the hamster wheel, dealing with, with tactical day-to-day uh, -day, um, requests, aligning tech to be more relevant from a business perspective um, takes a, a back seat, right? And, and so um, we want to, you know, the outsourcing model allows an organization to, to be more strategic through continuous improvement, through the tools, through the resources um, that, that, that we bring to bear, you know, stamping out uh, inefficiency on, on that front. And then, you know, with risk, uh, if you're asking an already taxed resource to uh, assist with an overarching plan to make an organization's IT security posture, for example, uh, more mature, then uh, corners are, are likely going to be cut. And, and, and maybe um, that resource isn't necessarily the right resource to dictate a overarching uh, system security plan. So, so you are, and the other thing is, once there is a breach, you have uh, you know, time, energy, and cost to contain and remediate. Um, so if you're bringing an organization in that can, can uh, deliver the, the right resources to create a uh, uh, sort of programmatic approach to uh, IT security, then again, you can um, squash uh, risk that leads to inefficiency. Um, quality of work. So if, if organizations are expecting uh, internal resources to support a, a multitude of technologies, some old, some new, um, you know, and, and, and work on project-based uh, initiatives, then ultimately uh, you, you fall into a jack of all trades and master of none scenario, which uh, means that, you know, there are gonna be areas that, that, that possibly get short end of the stick. Uh, and, and uh, you know, so there, there's a, a quality of work issue. And um, I think we mentioned earlier, I, we, we have, uh, I think it's close to 50 resources sitting in the knock and, and service desks with uh, a, a breadth of experience, right? So, so a, a deep and broad bench that you can tap into, um, and, and that allows for uh, that quality of work to, to be where it needs to be. And then, uh, question from a for time you, Matt. Well, yep. Got a question for you. Um, if yeah. you were to move, if we were to outsource our service desk of these five inefficiencies, uh, what is the quickest gain? What, what is the quickest gain? So wh where are, um, okay. well, Did James it, might have, yeah, so, so James might have a different perspective. So I'd like to have time in, but I, I think on the strategy side, um, there is a lot of ground that we can pick up because we're, we're kind of harping on um, internal resources um, being stuck in, you know, sort of a tactical role because they have to be. Um, and, you know, just the, the, the uh, amount of resources we bring to bear, the tools, the, the, the process uh, and, and, and methodology, uh, you know, having business review meetings, um, whether they're weekly, monthly, or quarterly, where we're thinking, you know, bigger picture, I think that that's definitely low hanging fruit, you know, and, and then doing everything with um, ITIL in mind so that we're really aligning technology with the business because in a lot of cases, um, internal IT goes back to, I would say speeds and feeds and boxes and wires and, and, and doesn't always necessarily connect the dots to um, business strategy. So um, I think that's low hanging fruit from, from my standpoint, James. Yeah, you know, I would add, you know, probably the the cost, right? So the 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 depending on why you're choosing to outsource, right? There could be numerous reasons. One could be, you know, you know, staff and the the expertise of the staff in your you know companies are wanting to change things up, or they're wanting to add additional expertise to the team, um, or or it could just be um, we're in a we're in a downturn right now, and you know this is 
that this makes sense for us, right? So I think cost is one of the biggest ones because then, you know, there's an economy of scale model that comes, you know, with that as well as us being able to add some of the services that we have, um, you know, that, that, that we can provide from, you know, security services to manage RMM services and things like that. So the other thing is time um, and quality of work. So those are two big ones. So what we see as a trend is as soon as like a service desk can not get activated for a client, um, you know, we see usually it's, uh, we have 100 tickets, right, uh, uh, every two months. What you'll notice is like a quadruple um, you know, that, that quadrupling to, you know, to could be, you know, 800 or 400, but because people start to call in and realize I'm getting immediate response to my tickets. And, and um, so they start to call in more, they start to submit more tickets and they start to see um, those type of things uh, move quickly. So we see this increase of, of um, you know, support tickets, but time to resolution, you know, that that's a major one that we see. And, and really the quality of work, they, we get a lot of um, feedback, as Matt said, those surveys that go out after every ticket. We get a lot of feedback um, during the onboarding phase of, oh, this is great. I, I, I'm glad I was able to you know pick up a phone and get resolution so quick and things like that. So those are some major ones as well. Yeah, and I, I, I'll just pile on to you know the the, the cost um, component of inefficiency. So we had a, a a Fortune 500 company approach us you know recently on on the IT security front, and um, they tried their best to build um, you know I would say things in house and you know stock, and they invested very heavily in best of breed, um, you know, tooling uh, right the way down. And then what they found is once uh, they put everything into uh, um, production, uh, they they got stuck, right? Uh, not, not only with administration and maintenance and, you know, obviously all the, uh, the information that's collected from these various tools, um, but but really what, what to do uh, moving forward. And so, it was a massive investment in money and fair play to them that they said, okay, we've made the investment, we're gonna treat it as a sunk cost and we've got to change gears and um, and look at outsourcing, um, you know, SOC as a service, uh, you know, vulnerability management and some other things. And, and um, you know, ultimately that is going to drive, you know, cost out of, of, of the business and have a positive impact. And then, I think I was uh, I was on um, time, I believe. So, if uh, uh, prior to the question, so if if end user ticket requests uh, can't be closed out efficiently and effectively, and I know James mentioned this, um, they begin to pile up, and then all of a sudden, uh, IT becomes a bottleneck, and those uh, those critical employees cease to be able to work and and, and function, and and so that has a a major. Um, impact. So, you know, to James's point, we've come in and, uh, you know, seen ticket volumes in the past be at a thousand tickets a month. And, uh, you know, we're able to um, quickly drive the ticket volume down, but also resolve those, those tickets much quicker so that you don't get this log jam uh, in the future that can be really, really disruptive. Um, so, Cynthia, if you move on, please. So, um, how, how does Diopath Service Desk and not combat these costs? I mean, we, we've, we've already hit on quite a few of these, so I don't want to be redundant, but, you know, Service Desk acting as, acting as a central point of contact for all technologies. I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier that a really deep bench of technical resources within the NOC and Service Desk with a broad range of uh, expertise and um, you know, ultimately we're able to deliver um, higher quality of work because of that, right? I mean, the guys and girls in the knock and service desk um, collaborate and, and uh, there's certainly some economies of scale, right? That we can bring to bear. And then uh, we, we talked about maintaining uh, and updating, you know, institutional knowledge, um, you know, via Wiki. And it sounds like something simple but a lot of uh, organizations internally um, don't 
always maintain that documentation, right, which impacts quality of work. Um, and then, you know, as far as pricing, predictable cost model, and that's what all the executives want, especially COOs and CFOs. And so the, the model we use, price per user, per month, uh, per uh, appliance, per server, um, what we're trying to do is give a very uh, uh, pr predictable uh, cost model that includes all the services that you need um, so that uh, we can uh, take care of that issue from uh, an inefficiency perspective. And then, you know, rapid resolution of technical issues. So uh, I'll go back to guaranteeing SLAs. <clears throat> so we are measuring, <clears throat> excuse me, response times, resolution timeframes, uh, service level agreement breaches. Um, the way we do CSAT with surveys, uh, we look at each one of those. We have uh, folks behind the scenes. And if there's um, scores of, you know, three out of five or below, then, you know, the, 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 uh, the radar is going off, right? And we're, we're really digging in and inspecting but all of this means we're working uh, uh, with, with some velocity, right, to, to get rapid resolution. And then um, when you combine NOC with uh, service desk, uh, I know we keep you know, harping on it, but being strategic, um, leveraging ITIL, uh, ensuring strategy and business relevancy of IT is, is, is front and center. Um, so, James, anything to add before we jump into IT maturity model? No, I, I think that's a good segue into the next one. So, all right. So, for uh, you know, as, as Matt started talking, you know, about what are those things that you you get with Service Desk, right, and Knock, and 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 really, uh, you know, a, a partner like Diopath is uh, the the way. The way I like to look at things, and 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 Diopath as a whole likes to look at things, is um, we have to assess, you know, where a client resides from an IT maturity model perspective, right? And, and what I mean by that is, you know, uh, one of the biggest things is is helping clients understand, okay, what stage are you at? You know, are you at one? Or are you at five? Right? And one being like chaos, react, you know, two being reactive, three being proactive for services and then really value, right? And being value is, is bringing value to the business, right? Because you have your repeatable processes and those type of things in there. But so understanding where the client resides and where we can take them. So, you know, one being unpredictable support. So uh, this is, you know, one and two is re really where we start to see, you know, a, a need for um, IT outsourcing from a managed services provider, you know, providing service desk or NOC services. Because what they're realizing is, one, we don't have a, a standard support model. Um, everything's firefighting. We're being reactive. Uh, we might have some tools in place, and they're they're throwing alarms, but we really don't know one how to how to handle them. Um, are they really uh, are they really just redundant alarms? Or, or is there any value? And and what are we doing with it? Right? What's the plan? Um, so what you tend to find in organizations that are in the one and two is they have somebody they're um, they have somebody on the IT staff or maybe a couple people, but there's no structure yet, um, and, and that's where you know a, a service desk and knock um, you know a service that comes in play can immediately impact that and bring them up to a different maturity model, and that's where you start going into your proactive model and and, and really a phase three. So you have a structure. I have a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. Um, how long would it take to, for me to go from chaos to value? Mm, that's a good question. So um, really, it depends on the size of the organization. Um, it depends on the complexity. So there's a lot of things like uh, regulatory compliance, uh, who you do business with. Um, I, I would say it, it could be. Um, you know, without using a, a managed services provider or, or anything like that. I mean, it, it could take over a year uh, to really get from a one to a five. In, in most instances, I see people stop at three, three and a half, four, um, just because they're like, this is sustainable for us, right? They're, they're not looking at tying in the, the value of, of how they could really benefit the business. Um, so you, you kind of see them stop at that four range. Um, but I would say to really get to five, you're probably looking at a two-year process. So, 
All right, so um, I'll, I'll jump back into the proactive piece of it, right? So when we start talking about progressing through those models and you're getting to three with the monitoring and management, um, really you're starting to have real structure in the IT organization. So um, one, you're starting to understand what what type of tickets I'm fielding, right? Uh, wh wh how I need to support those. You're mapping the business services. You're documenting. You're, you, you have a change management process in place and things like that. Um, as you start to progress into four, really as a service, that is a change of a mindset. So you're not necessarily just, I'm an IT department. No, I'm, a, I'm an organization providing a service to the rest of the departments within that, that uh, organization. So IT becomes um, almost like a, 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 a another service the departments are buying. So we can provide you X, Y, and Z services, right? So uh, almost like a, a service provider within the organization. So what can I do to help the different business units, right? Uh, not so much how many servers do you need, how many websites. You're really looking at it from the standpoint of what service can IT provide those business units to help drive value right within the organization so that's it's kind of a shift in a in a mindset so that's working closely with department heads um, and, and ensuring that you're aligned completely right that's having a good governance model in place across departments with it and really trying to focus on what can we do together and, and really start moving that model you know moving towards that level you know five which is value that it as a uh, as a as a strategic business partner piece is, is really is, um, when you reach that level five is, IT is operating as a cert, true service um, kind of entity within the organization, either if it's outsourced, internal, and your focus is completely aligned with the business. So your focus and your initiatives and things like that are to drive revenue, to reduce risks, uh, do, reduce risks within the organization. Um, you're becoming extremely efficient um, in, in your operations, things are documented. I mean, th these are where uh, regulatory compliance uh, comes into play. You have everything documented. You, you're passing your, uh, you know, ISO certification type, uh, type areas. Your, your SOCs compliant. Um, you're not giving. You're not getting hit on any of those things. But at the same time, um, you're, you're kind of like firing on all cylinders and really driving value within the business. So. Um, and this is also where technology and the IT teams um, with the business units can really start to say, okay, what can we do differently within our organization to deliver, you know, our core products or services? Um, so really, they, they start to be relied on as a, a kind of um, you are you are part of that process to say, okay, we can do things better, more efficiently. Um, with the IT department and not really looked as a cost center or just, you know, hey, give me more servers so I can, we can do our stuff, right? Um, th that is the progression that I, I like to say, it, you know, when you take it from a one to a five, completely transform IT, um, but it also aligns IT with the business. There's no questions there. I'll, I'll move on to the next one. So. You know, a lot of people ask, what does that look like, right? So what are the, what, what is that next gen IT operations, right? Uh, and and how, what is a, taking it from a one to five look like with a managed services provider? So um, I, I create, we created this, this kind of visual to say, okay, what are those support areas that I need to really understand? And when you do that, it's, I have end user support, right? And, and my end user support is how everything gets ingested into that IT uh, that, that IT uh, you know, model or IT as a service. So you have end user support where you're handling incident problem change, vendor asset management, the things that we talked about right earlier. Applications, um, business applications from CRM, ERP, uh, you know, operational productivity app, even custom applications and things like that. Or applications that are providing services to, uh, to that, uh, that, company's, uh, that company's clients as well. So, and then you have layered below that or really, you know, now you start to get into the, the infrastructure that is helping provide that, those applications and things like that. So on-premise infrastructures from connectivity to compute to network, storage, DR, right? That, that's also could be in the cloud or a hybrid, you know, could be AWS, could be Azure. Um, but those are the support areas that you start to look at to say, okay, here is here is what I need to support to bring value to the business, and how do I do that in the most efficient manner? 
And that's really where you start layering in IT as a service, cybersecurity as a service, right? So when you look at organizations, you can't, or um, sorry, when you look at IT outsourcing or managed services providers, I always cautious to say, uh, don't look at the tooling. Look at the look at the companies that really focus on uh, providing a, a, um, an organization. Like, what do we need to do to meet those needs? And and what I mean by that by that is, they understand that IT as a service is not just I can provide you service desk network and 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 you know uh, some tooling and and some engineering support. It's bigger than that. It's I can provide. I can provide assessments, I can advise you, I can provide, you know, fractional VCIO services, but at the same time, you know, those are more strategic items, but at the same time, I can maintain the uh, the ongoing operations from a service desk and not a network support or infrastructure or application or cloud support. And I also have the capabilities as part of that assess and advise from a strategic perspective to help you with architecting, designing, and providing engineering support to deliver on those areas. So really it's it's three key areas to be able to support those support areas and different business units. And and it's how that all all that works together is really in a continuous improvement process. So if you're constantly looking at how can I assess, advise, how can I support, how can I help with you know that engineering piece and how that all flows together, that's really what IT as a service is. It's not just providing point solutions for service desk or network ops and things like that. And when I go, when I talk about application support, uh, to jump back to that piece, it's also being able to say, I can provide application performance monitoring, not just I will tell you if a service is down. So when you start to to look at application performance monitoring from that perspective, you're really ingraining yourself in the business applications. Um, so you are closely tied to you know, providing performance improvement uh, uh, recommendations. You're, you're helping really drive those applications efficiencies and health. You're not just saying something's wrong, right? That's a big thing um, for a lot of companies. And, and when, I, when you stack on cybersecurity as a service, again, I hate to look at things from a tooling perspective. Cybersecurity as a service needs to be all encompassing. You need to, to be able to assess and advise you need to be able to look at all those support areas and look at from a vulnerability management perspective, you know, what systems, what applications, my users, all through that stack, what could be vulnerable and outside of that stack that connects in, right? And, and you have to have that capability. From a mail security, malware, endpoint, you know, mobile device, SIM services, those are toolings that really help drive that service, right? And think of it as like a program. Uh, I'm ingesting all that data from, you know, the vulnerability management from all these other uh, endpoints. I'm I'm educating uh, the the knock and the service desk that these things are are uh, issues, right? You're looking at all those type of things uh, as well. And then you're looking at the employee training piece of it. So you're 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 also educating the end users on here are the threats and things that are coming out there, which is a critical piece of that. Um, the other two major ones are like documenting processes. So a lot of a lot of these services and things like that, they don't focus on the documentation of the process and that's critical. So from a documenting the processes, okay, what's occurring? Uh, what do we need to do better? Uh, really that's, that's the ingestion of all that data into a knowledge base and a constant review of that. And especially if you're regular, if you have regulatory compliance or any type of compliance, that's critical and, and most companies they will provide you the tooling to get that data, but they don't provide that service. And then um, really from like engineer, like an engineering support, we have regulatory support. So if you are publicly traded, um, if you have to comply with CMMC or things like that, um, th that is layered within with the cybersecurity as a service. So uh, that's why I say when you start looking at this from, um, if you can jump back to one, one slide, Cynthia, if you can see the color coding on the last one was you start to go from chaos to value, you can start to see that, okay, we're gonna advise and tell you how you can get here. We can inject these services to get you to the proactive to service. And then when you start looking at the other ones, it's like, okay, here's what we can do to start to get you to and providing, you know, to get you to a level five. So really you have to look at things as a overarching service um, and not just tooling or point solutions and things like that. That's the value. Um, 
uh, that's the value you get um, with a you know with a outsourcing service desk or or knock or even cybersecurity as a service. It's it's being able to progress you through that IT maturity model um, and really bring value to the organization. All right, can you move to the next one? All right, Matt, I believe this one's yours. Yeah, let's talk about some real world examples and, and tie all this together. I know we've got eight minutes, so we'll uh, we'll hustle through these next uh, two slides, two case studies, another slide, and then hopefully have a little bit of time for Q&A. Um, so let, let's start with Fairbanks Morse and I'll uh, frame it up for you. So Midwest based naval contractors, so they're part of the defense industry base. Um, they uh, were recently sold by their parent company that was providing uh, IT support uh, for the most part to a, uh, a private equity uh, firm. And so, you know, recent carve out, uh, you know, lean IT staff to begin with. Um, and so they made the decision to pivot those internal resources that were capable of pivoting um, to, to be leaders uh, and, and architects, so to speak, within the organization and then they engaged uh, Diopath as an MSP to start by operating below the waterline. But honestly, as we were helping them in their transition to stand alone, that waterline moved north uh, pretty quickly. Um, and, and so uh, what happened is, you know, they moved a lot of their applications and systems um, to specific uh, cloud service providers, you know, due to uh, certification reasons. Um, they have the Department of Defense compliance hang over their head. So IT security was uh, a problem that needed to be solved, um, not only right out of the gate, but on an ongoing basis. Um, uh, the IT team needs to move with velocity, right, to keep up with the business. And uh, the, the, the model, it, it needs to be a, a highly scalable IT support model to support Fairbanks being the platform company for a roll-up, right, that, that private equity has in mind for them. And so um, just to get down to brass tacks, because some of you guys might be thinking, okay, well, what, what did you do for them? Um, project management. Um, we are uh, co-managing a very specific um, security stack that has to be FedRAMP um, certified. Um, so we've got uh, resources dedicated to the, the, the account that look after that. Um, given that they moved a lot of their workloads uh, into a prominent uh, cloud service provider, uh, they needed expertise uh, within that cloud service provider to um, manage and continually optimize the environment. Um, we certainly included service desk to support the end users and they're unique in that some of their end users might be in the middle of an ocean, right? Supporting uh, uh, a naval vessel, um, uh, knock on core infrastructure. And then finally, there was an opportunity to provide um, some on-site resources. So long story short, they had a time crunch, which pushed them in our direction. But in order to provide all these services, and, and ultimately get to that fifth stage in the IT maturity model, um, it would have cost them countless dollars, uh, you know, versus engaging an MSP. So that was the advantage. So James, I'll uh, I'll let you talk about Hanover. Yeah, not not a problem. I'll I'll try to keep it short so we can have some time for questions. Um, so uh, so Hanover is pretty interesting where they have a they are a I would say luxury construction uh, company for. Um, high-end apartments and, and things like that, where they uh, actually rent those out and then um, sell those properties um, to property management companies and, and they run them. So at any given time, they could have 30 uh, construction, uh, you know, uh, um, apartment, you know, luxury apartment buildings being built at any given time. And then they're managing another, you know, 20 or so, and, and, and some could be flipping, you know, those. So they, they have a very fluid model. Um, and and with that fluid model, they needed an IT company that could come in and one um, 
be as fluid as they are. Uh, so, you know, day one, uh, after after winning that opportunity, um, we were able to save them $1.1 million uh, in IT expense um, by moving to, to our offering. Um, and, and, you know, kind of as Matt said, so what did we do for them? So it was a complete full outsource from a, uh, from a project manager that uh, manage that account to network and you know service desk to network uh, even a hybrid model of, of some um, uh, individuals on site uh, for service desk support so really we we provided a complete outsource of our um, of, of IT for them and as their as their company kind of grows and shrinks you know the model that we put in place with them allows for that as well so um, They'll they'll shrink to 200 users and then grow to 600 users and really just depends on their business and and we're able you know with our managed services offering we're able to you know grow and shrink with them and and really be fluid um, but at the same time um, you know we're also able to provide uh, the level of security the level of infrastructure support they need as their business grows. Um, and again, like I said, you know, going in day one and being able to, you know, reduce costs by $1.1 million is, is pretty significant. And, and we've consistently um, not increased costs, you know, as technology increases and, and things like that. We've moved them from traditional infrastructures to cloud-based infrastructures, and, and they've really been able to, to um, take advantage of that and, and, you know, keep costs, you know, driving down as their business grows. Um, and, and we've become an integral part of of um, of the business. So, um, it, pretty pretty interesting story there. So. All right, and then the, the 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 drum roll for the top four reasons to outsource your IT service desk and 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 knock uh, support. And and obviously we can, we've covered all these throughout the presentation, so we can glide through this um, c continuous improvement. There's a uh, a major focus on our side, and James delved into in detail with the IT maturity model. Um, rapid resolution by bringing a 24 by 7 knock and service desk and, um, you know, ITIL to bear, um, you know, elevating those uh, internal resources, as we mentioned, in our client engagement model. And then lastly, bring it all together to improve client satisfaction, right, whether that's the end user base that an IT team is supporting, um, uh, or uh, you know the, the the clients that organizations are serving, making um, those end users on IT platforms more efficient, so they can make more money for the the organization. So that's it, Cynthia. One minute to spare for Q and A. How about that? Is great, you got to do a great job, and to be respectful of everyone's time, we are right at time. But absolutely would like to ask one more time if anyone has any closing questions for our panelists. Okay. Well, thank you all again very much for joining us. Matt and James, you did an outstanding job. And be on the lookout uh, for an email from solutions at dialpath.com with the PDF of today's presentation and a link to the recording. And have a lovely day. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye bye.